So this is the most important uh, aspect of push hands practice, in my opinion, is using a wall. Um, because it breaks down a lot of what I call um, ability for you to like hold on to your partner and just like start, basically you change it from push hands into grappling when you start holding on to the elbows and everybody just starts grappling with each other. And push hands isn't really about that. It's about trying to listen, right? I'm trying to do Tifong and trying to, you know, stay kind of relaxed through this whole process. As soon as you both start grappling and start wrestling, it's, it's very hard to stay relaxed. So, um, now it doesn't mean you can't do that, but you, once you do that, you have to start doing Dalu. You get to move your feet once they do that. So, um, with that in mind, you're trying to uh, find a practice that will keep you from grappling. So the wall is one of the best methods because what it does, it breaks um, your habit of trying to hold on. And after hitting the wall a few times, which is, this isn't a wall, but you can pretend, uh, you start to relax against it. Your body just says, oh, I'm just going to hit the wall. So what you do is you get a partner that agrees to it, basically, and you start doing push and roll back like you've been doing. And whenever you feel tension in his body, you soften around it and just push into it. And in the beginning, it's going to be really gross level. You know, you're just going to be kind of leaning in a little bit. But then after a few hundred times, you kind of start to relax into it. And you start to notice, oh, you don't need much force at all. Actually, he's going to actually give you enough force just on his own. So uh, you just relax and follow his, his, his tension. So, there's a couple things you should know. First of all, don't get, get him too close to the wall. Get uh, maybe six, eight inches at least away from the wall, maybe more. As you get better, farther away. And um, when you push him, you want to have all four things touch. His two shoulders and his two hips hit the wall at the same time. So it's almost chiropractic, chiropractic at that moment. You, you're kind of adjusting his energy and physical body a little bit. See it? So when he's turned like that, you want to turn him back to the wall. That way he can keep hitting the wall and it doesn't hurt. And he just naturally will just hit it. And then after a while, you get really good at it and he'll just kind of bounce back into your arms and you can just keep doing it. You know? See that? And just keep popping it. And then you get a lot of practice pushing and then what you do is you just have your partner switch. And now he gets to do it to me. So, uh, in the beginning, uh, you kind of have to tense up for him. So he gets the feeling, oh yeah, that's when I push. And then after a while, you don't tense up as much. And you still let him try to push you, but he finds deeper layers that he, he needs to relax to get me, you know, if I relax a little bit, that means he has to relax more to push. So it becomes this cycle and both of you start learning lots and lots of things about your body and about your postures and about your push and about your rollback and about how to neutralize and how to project. All with this practice. So you have to do it a lot. And this, and you really should use a wall. Again, if you don't have one, I know that's a problem, it's, it's a problem but you usually can find something like this somewhere. And you can just, just practice with your partner over and over and over again. This, my teacher said, really, this is the most important. So, thank you.